Hi there, Brian here. Seeing as it was release day for the Leagues of Wotan yesterday, I wanted to do a quick video on building a 9 here champion from the new army box, who's going to be my test mini for my new army. I know some of channels have had these videos out for weeks now, but I do all these videos on my own. I don't have an NDA with Games Workshop, I'm not sponsored, and I bought this set with my own money. So I thought some of you may like to hear an open and honest opinion of the models without any bias. So this is a beautiful codex, and while I'd love to show you inside, I can't for obvious legal reasons. I will say straight off though, these rules are broken. I mean, they're laughably overpowered. My favourite is the Dark Star Axe, that prevents your opponent using any rules to avoid losing wounds if this axe hits. It's just ridiculous. However, I admit that I'm more into the building and painting, so I thought I'd build a mini and give my first impressions of the design and the moulds. One thing to note is that you're going to have to keep your codex nearby as you're building your models, as the instructions contain no information on the weapons. However, in pages 32 and 33 of the codex, you'll find some infographics that explain all types of weapons on the sprue. Like my first impressions of the sprues are actually pretty good, I was a little worried about how many parts there were for just one miniature. I know that might sound a bit silly, but that's only because my experience is mostly with Primaris Marines, and I'm pretty clumsy if I'm being totally honest. Some parts are a little small and could easily be bent when being clipped off if you aren't paying attention, but we'll come to those later. The Einher Champion is a monopose build, so I start by removing the main torso and his legs. They're a bit smaller than I'm used to, so I cut them with quite a wide margin. Now, there's one thing I feel important to point out here. Please do not copy my flash and sprue cleanup technique. Please don't. The reason I'm doing this is because I work with lots of electronic equipment and metal frames and coax cable, so I have pretty thick calluses on my fingertips um, because I'm being spiked and nipped almost every day in work. So please don't try this at home, use the proper tools. Perhaps because I'm not so familiar with other models that much within the Warhammer range, I found some of the contact points on the sprue a little odd. On more than one piece, I found that the contact points were quite near details that could be easily nicked off whenever you're removing flash or a mould line. Once I removed all the flash, I did find that mould line removal was remarkably easy. On most of these pieces, the lines are incredibly fine and very hard to see. That's great in some ways, but once primed, these would show up very easily. The legs, of course, have the most noticeable mould lines and required me to be quite careful in their removal. Botan armour has these studs all over, so you can very easily nick those off when you're removing mould lines. One thing I will say about these sculpts is they have some really good neat lines that make them actually quite good for dry fitting. Although I did have some initial confusion on how they fit, but again, I think that's just because I'm used to Primaris Marines. But I was able to test fit the legs and the torso easily together before gluing them. I decided to build my champion in the same way as all the promotional material, with the mass hammer. This is the first part where you'll find some delicate moulding that can be easily bent when snipping off the sprue. The hammer has a strap attached, so do be careful and perhaps snip that free first. Now, I was very proud of myself because I remembered to drill out the barrels on the storm bolter. But I did find that the bolter barrels had a little bit of poor definition on the sides. The holes on the side of Space Marine bolters are usually quite clear and well defined, but I find these a little shallow. Now, that's not enough for it to be a problem, because once they were drilled out, they looked normal. It's just that I thought they were a little bit shallow compared to other sprues. Both of the miniature's arms fit and glue on really well. There's very clearly defined edges and ridges for placement. And the sprue does have some variation options, like this crest. You have a choice of a ram's head or a bull's head. Now, this is a good example of not so great contact placement. I chose the bull's head here because it had the better contact and there was less chance of me damaging the detail. Your choice of crest also determines what plate you should use from these two options on the side of the storm bowler. Do check the instructions though, because it might not be entirely obvious what inscription represents what crest. At least, it wasn't to me. 
As for the head options, you only have two. And I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of unhelmeted minis. You see, from my point of view, if in the future there is only war, then don't take your helmet off. It's really that simple. So yeah, I kind of wish this guy either had his visor down or a helmet option, but um, as it was, I just chose the standard head used in all the promotional material. Next, I glued what I think are the pistons onto his back. These are the other parts that I find a little bit fragile when snipping free, because I think the piping could be easily bent off as you're manipulating the piece to clean the flash and mold lines. But they do fit really well, and they're very secure once attached and glued in. Finally, I attach the crest, and that's it, the model's done. This model had some really nice, clearly defined edges for assembly, but I could see some of the other models being a little more frustrating. Overall, I really like these new models. They've got very nice, clean, crisp detail, and sharp edges on the power armor is going to make these guys easy to highlight and stand out in the battlefield. There's a lot of detail in these sculpts, but it's definitely not so much that it's going to make them infuriating to paint. And due to their size, they may require sub-assembly if you really want to get all that detail. But that's something I'll find out as I'm painting. And I'm really looking forward to coming up with a custom colour scheme. It's a little weird that they're about the same scale as a normal Imperial Guard, but I'm going to give GW the benefit of the doubt, and I guess inside Pyre Armour, they're going to be a little bit bulkier than you would expect. So that's it from me. It's not much, and I'm sorry if you've seen it all before, but I'm just excited to have these guys. So, as always, enjoy your painting, have fun, and I'll see you soon.